what's happening? What's going on? It's Haley here. You are listening to Weight Loss Without Dieting. And I want to just mention really quickly before I get started in this episode that typically when I record episodes in my office, I work in this big old house um, that's sort of like an office space, but no one else is ever here. I'm always the only one and it's so quiet and it's so amazing. And I came into the office today and there was people here (laughs) and they're setting up like a cafe downstairs on the first floor of this, of this empty house. And I was like, Oh dang, it's going to be so loud because it's an old house. So the sound really carries. So in the future, I might have to figure out something else. Um, another way to record these in a soundless environment, but for today, It is what it is. You might hear a little bit of background noise. So hopefully it's not super distracting. Um, And yeah, we're going to get started. So I, the, the idea for this episode came from those videos that you see, videos, posts, social media, whatever, of people saying, this is what I eat in a day to look like this or to lose weight. And it's always like, you know, these beautiful pictures of like the most colorful plates and i think about like what my plates look like in a day it's just like whatever i can get my hands on no it's not always like that but i got this idea from those videos because they're so focused on these are the specific foods that i eat and i think that it continues to drive this idea that in order to lose weight we have to eat this these specific foods or eat like that person oh they don't eat carbs or they don't eat i don't know (laughs) they don't eat cheese so that's what i need to do and that's not at all how that works that person in the whoever you got in your mind who you've seen doing one of those videos it works for them because of things that precede what's going onto their plate so i'm going to do what I eat in a day to lose 10 pounds in a month, but I'm going to do the mindset version. So I am going to tell you my actions. I am going to talk about what I eat, but I'm first going to tell you how I, the process that precedes those actions, every action in your life, this is universal, but I'm talking to you. You're not excluded from this. Every action that you take is preceded by a thought that creates an emotion and that emotion drives your actions. So simply focusing on your actions can feel really hard. If you're looking at like a model saying, this is what I eat in a day. And it's this like perfectly beautiful day of beautifully balanced foods. And you're like, oh my God, I could never do that. I just couldn't you know, if I want to look like her, I have to do that list of actions and I could never do that. It's just not true. You really need to just focus on your mindset, the things that precede those actions. And then all of a sudden the actions fall into place. It feels super easy and amazing and you start losing weight. So I'm going to break this all down for you, what that process looks like and what process I use when I'm losing weight. So I just lost Um, well, I, I specifically focused on losing 10 pounds, like here with you guys, uh, in my postpartum weight loss, but I lost a couple more pounds after that. And I actually think I'm going to come back around and do this again, do another 10 pound weight loss, um, with you guys, because the last like month or so has just been so crazy. And I have, I've done so much work on myself and this weight journey for the last couple of years that most of it's just natural. I don't really have to think about it, but I've noticed in the last month, just, I feel like I'm eating. I'm not feeling the same, um, like hunger and satiety that I normally do. I'm not focusing on it as much as I normally do. I am having a lot more sugar cravings, which is not typical for me. And it's all just speaking to, I've kind of put all of that like on the back, not on the back burner, but I've really just, it's not in my mind a lot. 
and I want to revisit it and like refocus on it and do it with you guys. So I probably will do another 10 pound um, weight loss with you. Anyways, that was a whole side note that was not necessary at all. <laughs> but I was just saying, I just recently went through this process of losing 10 pounds. I did it in 30 days, which is not a problem. Even for someone like me, I wasn't really, my weight wasn't really high to begin with. And a lot of times we think that 10 pounds is gonna be really challenging and the only way it would be easy is if we had a lot of weight to lose and it's just not true. Um, you can lose that weight quickly, it, you know, 10 pounds in 30 days and do it in a way that still feels really good. It's not restrictive and it, you can be already close to your, to your goal weight. So I actually recently had a client do this. She came to work with me. She's like, I only have 10 pounds to lose. Um, and she's like, I just, I feel like since it's only 10 pounds, it's just gonna take so long. It's gonna take like three, six months. And she ended up, I think she lost it in like three weeks. It was crazy. So it is possible. Like it doesn't have to take a long time. Um, so I'll just throw that out there. But I, this, well, I already said that. I'm really gonna take you through my mindset and how I how I have these actions that effortlessly fall into place. I don't focus on actions when I'm losing weight. I focus on the pieces that precede the actions, um, which makes those actions feel really good, really effortless, really amazing. And I'll also say when I go into my weight loss journey, I'm excited about it. You might feel right now, if you've tried a lot of diets before, if you've tried a lot of action taking to lose weight before, that weight loss feels really difficult, like a struggle, it can feel really miserable. Um, one of my clients always says it feels like suffering and it's not permanent. It doesn't have to feel like any of those things. It can feel really effortless and easy and be fun and just deepen your relationship with yourself and your body, which is what it what it is, what it can be if you're focused on your mindset. So ultimately, like the bigger picture of losing weight in the way that I'm gonna to talk to you about in this episode is losing weight in a way that also feels good and deepens your relationship with yourself and your body. So when we are talking about mindset weight loss, we need to understand this principle because it's gonna come up as I go through this. You, before you take action, which is what we're all so focused on, before you take action, you have a thought in your brain. This is a sentence that repeats in your brain. If you ever feel like there's two voices in your head, that's one of those voices that that's, it's talking to you. You can hear it and then there's a voice talking to you. That's those thoughts. So every thought creates an emotion. And sometimes people say to me, I don't think I have the emotion piece. I'm not a big, you know, feely person. That's okay, but you still do have emotions. Every thought creates an emotion. You just might be disconnected from feeling them, which is also okay. This happens over time. And we're not really taught about any piece of this process. We're not really taught a lot about emotions to begin with. So that's okay if you feel like disconnected from that or if that's not really resonating, just know that they are still there and that it's not just this kind of woo woo abstract thing that some people think is happening. Emotions also called feelings, I will use that interchangeably, are a physiological response that's happening in your body from that thought. So thoughts actually have create a physiological response in your body and you can feel them. If you think about really extreme ones like fear, you feel that in your body or joy, you feel that in your body, excitement, you can tell me, okay, yes, I actually, I do know what you're talking about. There's other ones that are, have a lot less feeling 
in your body, but they all have some sort of feeling in your body. So every thought creates an emotion. And from emotion, from that physical sensation, we take action. So when we are trying to substitute a bunch of actions into our life, like creating this beautiful plate at every meal, <laughs> and it's not aligned with the thoughts and the emotions that we're currently having, it feels very difficult. It feels like a struggle. It feels like you have to use every ounce of willpower that you have in order to follow through on that action. And the reason is because your thoughts and your emotions are not aligned with that action that you're trying to plug in to your life. So in order for your actions to create weight loss in a way that feels really effortless, you first have to think about what thought and what emotion is going to create that action for me. And I'm gonna get into that more. So when I go to lose weight, I don't focus on diets at all. I don't focus on the actions. I don't think about macros or points or calories. I don't even usually have a plan to go to the gym. I love going on walks, but I never, I'm not like, oh, I'm gonna go to the gym every day. None of that. I don't think about like, these are the specific foods that I'm gonna eat and that I'm not gonna eat, none of that. Where my focus goes is on my thoughts and what emotions those thoughts are going to create so that I can drive the actions that are gonna help me lose weight. So I do occasionally think about like, I would like to make sure that I'm eating a lot of protein. That was one thing, a big thing for me when I was doing my postpartum weight loss. Um, actually when I was pregnant and when I was losing my weight postpartum, was I wanted to make sure I was getting a lot of protein and a lot of water and lowering my carb intake. When I'm stressed out, when I'm low on time, my go-to is like just noodles and pasta and rice and no protein. So I was like, I don't, that's not something I know. I don't want to do that. Um, so I did make sure that I was focused on the protein aspect. So there are actions that I will think about, like I would like this to happen, but I always take it back to what thought and emotion is going to effortlessly drive that action for me. So I focus on that first, as opposed to the action or only the action. So this is what I mindset in a day to lose 10 pounds in a month. And I, so I, these are the thoughts and then I'm going to list some of the thoughts and then the emotion that that thought creates. And when I go to lose weight, I really do think about overall my, what my overall experience is going to be from an emotional place. Cause I know that there are certain emotions for me that really drive successful weight loss that feels good. And those are confident, calm, certain, and then some of the other ones that I kind of uncovered here were relaxed, which I guess is very similar to calm, present, like present in my body, present with whatever I'm experiencing. And then one that kind of came up was self-love. I think for sure when I was doing my postpartum weight loss, that was a big one for me. Um, was that self-love piece, like just, just be having compassion for myself in what I was going through in that moment and just experiencing love for myself and this whole big thing that I was doing. <laughs> so yours might not be those, but a hundred percent confidence, calm, and certainty. Those are three emotions that I direct all of my clients to focus on when they're losing weight because they're so powerful and they will create weight loss that happens, that happens even though that you're living your life and that feels so good. Okay, and they're not super high energy. Excitement, motivation, willpower, pressure, stress, those are all very high energy. Those are emotions that we use all the time to try and lose weight. And they're very high energy and we wear out and we cannot sustain those. 
calm, confidence, certainty, those don't require a ton of energy. They're very steady and we don't like run out of the ability to maintain them. So these are some of the thoughts that I use. I know how to lose weight. That creates confidence for me. So my entire pregnancy, anytime I would start to think about like, is it going to be really hard to lose weight after pregnancy? I had no idea. This was my first kid. Um, and had all these stories. Everyone else is telling me stories constantly about their weight loss struggle after they had kids and how hard it is and all the things. And every time that thought popped into my head, I was just like, I know how to lose weight. No matter what someone else's experience was, they likely don't know the tools that I know. They haven't done the work that I've done. I know how to do this. I know how to do this. Another one that I used, the weight will come off quickly and easily as I slow down to listen. A lot of times when we get into this weight loss like push, we think that we need to go faster. We have this big goal. And this is something my clients talk about all the time. This big goal is tripping me up. Like the 50 pounds is just overwhelming for me. And I think, you know, every week I, I have to lose 50 pounds in that week. And the more that you slow down and start tapping into your body and listening to your body and creating this sense of calm, and confidence for yourself, the faster the weight comes off. One of my clients actually came to a call this week and she's like, she has a, a 10 pound goal for the next, I think it's like three weeks that she wants to take off. And she's like, every time I thought about it like that, it was too much. What I just, I took it down to like today, this is what I'm doing. I'm focusing on feeling confident and feeling certain that I know how to do this. And she lost, she went to, she said she went out for Mexican food a couple times. She went to a party. She had um, just a really busy schedule and she lost two pounds. She had margaritas. She had chips and queso. She had dessert. She had all of the things. And she's like, and I lost two pounds because I really just focused on like slowing down. What's the thing that I can do today? I'm not trying to speed this up. I know I'll hit that goal if I just focus on like this moment. So as you slow down to listen to yourself, to connect with yourself. Another thing I talk about a lot here is that brain body connection to actually listen to what your body's telling you, the information that your body's giving you, the weight will come off faster and faster. So that thought for me creates certainty. And I love that feeling of certainty, just knowing that, the, that it's happening and it's just a matter of time. I will lose weight as my body is ready to. And that just creates that feeling of calm. Like I'm calm. It's happening. I don't need to do anything. A lot of times when I talk to people about this mindset piece and what this all is, they're like, we got to go, go, go. We got to action, action, actions, actions all the time. It doesn't need to be. Your body does not want to be overweight. Your body wants to weigh less if you're overweight. <laughs> if you're not, then maybe not. But if you're overweight, your body doesn't want to be overweight. It wants to hit, get back to where it's supposed to be. And as you listen to your body, it will, it will release the weight. And you've got to just have this sense of calm with that. So that that's one that's just there for me. And I can always call on to help me find that calm especially if I'm feeling stressed or like I need to substitute a bunch of actions. It's like, no, no, no. My body will release this weight as it's ready to. The process of weight loss is about getting to know myself better. And that's, you know, I think there might've been a time in my life where that just seemed way too woo woo. But if you come at weight loss from, I'm going to, let my body lead me through this process, let my body's natural signals lead me through this process, then you actually do just get to, weight loss is really about getting to know yourself better because you're just listening more. You're more tuned in. 
and you're honoring and respecting what your body wants and needs more than ever before. So that one actually created self-love. That was one, when I sat down to, to write this episode, I was like, oh, I didn't even really realize that I was ut- utilizing that emotion of like self-love, but I am. It's there with that thought. I want to lose weight. That creates desire for me. Desire to lose weight, motivation, what's the other one, excitement. Those are, I don't utilize those a ton. Those are ones that we think we need in order to lose weight. I have to be excited about this. I have to be motivated to lose weight. You really don't. (laughs) If there is some sort of desire, like you're here listening to this podcast or you're getting on a call with me to talk about my program and working with me, there is, you do have a desire to lose weight. It's being drowned out by your desire to eat but you don't have to utilize that desire, that excitement, that motivation in order to start losing weight. You really need to just tap into a confidence in your ability to do it and your body's ability to do it. That's when it feels really good. Desire, excitement, motivation, those high energy emotions we cannot sustain and we get worn out. People are constantly coming to me like, where did my motivation go? It left. Yeah, you got worn out. (laughs) You couldn't sustain it. And also, it didn't work. The dieting didn't work. It was a struggle. It was it was difficult the whole time. You gained all of the weight back as soon as you looked at a cookie. And now you're thinking, I don't want to do that again. Of course, you don't have any motivation. That's where your motivation went. (laughs) Okay, anyways. Um, so I want to lose weight that creates that desire within me, but that is always in combination with like, I know how to lose weight, that confidence, which just brings it all back down and brings it all back together. Um, I'm so excited to lose weight. And that's when I, I kept coming back to when I was pregnant, when I was in those early days of, um, postpartum. I was just like, I'm so excited to dive into it. And it does it create that excitement, but that again, that was always paired with like, I'm looking forward to getting to know my body better. So it was paired with something that was way more grounded than excitement, like calm and self-love. It's just brings it down back into my body, very grounding. Um, I love paying attention to my hunger and my satiety. That gives me present give what <laughs> that, I hope you didn't hear that but a motorcycle just drove by and it really distracted me and I was like what am I saying um I love paying attention to my hunger and my satiety and that creates the emotion of present for me so present in my body paying attention to my body what's going on in my body body and present is another one of those emotions that it's like confidence or calm it's very still It does not require a ton of energy and it will help you through this process in reconnecting, reestablishing that brain body connection and helping you to listen to the signals that your body is giving you. Um, And this was another one I focused on in this 10 pounds. I love the feeling of eating less. I love the feeling of eating less. I think for sure for me when I was postpartum, I, there's just so much going on. (laughs) I felt at times very stressed, very overwhelmed. And it was kind of this natural tendency to, when I had a minute to eat, to just eat all of it because it was there, because I didn't know when I was, would get another moment to, to eat or to have a minute. And so I kept taking myself back to that. Like, I, I really love the feeling of eating less, not eating more and creating that, that emotion of present inside my body so that I could really pay attention to what my body was telling me about the food, how much I was eating and how that felt for me. So I don't know what it is with this motorcycle. My God, they must be just like out in front of my building, just like 
in a loop, like just going back and forth. That's like the 10th time. Oh Lord. Okay. So I talked a little bit about the emotions that those thoughts created. And from those, I take action. So this is where most weight loss journeys begin is with the action. It's where what I eat in a day begins. So I am going to tell you the emotions that I take from the actions that I just listed, but do not skip what I just went over. Also, I didn't mention this before and I really didn't think about it until now. You can use the thoughts that I use and the emotions that I use. However, the most important thing when you're practicing thoughts and practicing emotions is that they resonate with you. So if my, if you say one of my thoughts and it doesn't do anything for you, don't use it, find your own. You can use any of those emotions. Sometimes this is why sometimes I start with the emotion. Like this is the emotion I want to create. What thoughts create that for me? So where you might begin with this process is you're going to do those three emotions that I said, confidence, calm, and certainty. Now think about what thoughts create those emotions for you along the lines of weight loss, along the lines of eating less, hitting, losing 10 pounds in a month. What thoughts create the emotion of confidence? I know how to lose weight. I can do this. I've done it before. I can take the first step something along those lines and go from there. Okay. So these are the actions that I took from the thoughts and the emotions that I just gave you. First, I was weighing in daily or weekly, but I had a very loose focus on it. I wasn't ever stressing out about it or worrying about it if I forgot or if I Yeah, I was gonna say, or if I just didn't do it, but yeah, essentially if I forgot to do it or I like, you know, I just didn't stress about it. I didn't worry about it. I didn't beat myself up about it. I certainly wasn't going to bed at night thinking about it or waking up worrying about getting on the scale. So I had a loose focus about this, but it was something that I was like, I want to, I want to weigh in. I want to step on that scale. I want to know where I am, how my progress is going. The scale is a tool. It is telling you what's working in your mindset and what isn't working in your mindset. Nothing more. For you, it might feel like a lot more, but anything outside of this is what's working in my mindset and this is what isn't working in my mindset is just thoughts that your brain is dramatizing about the scale and what it means. We put way too much, what's the word? I don't know, way too much drama into the scale. It's really feedback. It's a tool for you. If the scale was a calculator, we don't have any drama about calculators. Scale is the same thing. Step on the scale, weigh in daily. You want to know what's working in your mindset and what isn't working. And so that you can make tweaks and figure out what you're gonna continue to practice moving forward. Um, So another thing I did was make a plan daily. Now for me, I've been doing this for a long time. I don't necessarily write my plan down that much anymore. I always recommend when when my clients start that they're writing it down because we don't want it to be negotiable. When we don't write it down, a lot of times it becomes negotiable. (laughs) Well, I said I was going to have a salad for lunch, but you know, everyone else is getting cheeseburgers and French fries and yeah, you know what? F it. Like who cares? write it down that way you can see when your brain starts offering up yeah just go ahead and get that cheeseburger and french fries everyone else is doing it it's going to be so good it won't make you gain weight like all of the thought you want to be able to start seeing where your brain is wanting to deviate from the plan and what it's saying to you about deviating from that plan it's really important that you get that information because that's going to show you that's so that you can start moving forward with that information to um tell you 
like this is this is what my brain's giving to me in those moments i need to be able to hear it in those moments um so that i can plan for it next time so writing it down is does really serve a purpose i will say for me because i'm so long practiced in this sometimes i wrote it down and sometimes i didn't um and that works for me but if you're a beginner at this write it down so i make a plan um and it's based on how my day or my week is going to look so this is what i've got going on today this is the plan that i'm putting together based on i'm going to be running around all day so you know i need to pack a snack in my bag so that i'm not like desperately starving and i have to get a nasty meal at i don't know the coffee shop I was gonna name names, but I decided not to. There's one coffee shop in particular that you've definitely been to and they have the worst food. Um, but I have been in that situation before where I didn't really think through like, this is what my day is gonna look like. And then I'm stuck with something that I really didn't wanna eat. So thinking about what your day is gonna look like. I also, I also think about what my week is going to look like. So I might say, you know, if I don't think, here's what I want to say. If I don't think it through all the way to the end, like, okay, Friday and Saturday, I have birthday parties and there's going to be cake and cheese and crackers and all the things that I love at both of those parties. And I want to indulge in those. Then if I don't think that far ahead, then I might be saying, well, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm going to have dessert. And then it, we hit Friday and it's like, oh, Crud, I didn't think about the fact that there's also me dessert tonight and there's me dessert tomorrow. And there, look at, I've just had dessert five days in a row and I'm trying to lose weight. So I also think about like, what does the rest of my week look like and how am I going to plan in that re regard about what I'm going to eat today? Um, and my plan also, this is what my client's plans look like. This is what my plan looks like. It's focused a lot around my body's natural signals. So instead of saying, I'm going to eat a salad at noon because it's lunchtime, I say, I'm going to eat a salad when my body tells me it's ready to eat. Which by the way, I don't love salads. <laughs> it's rarely on my plan. I'm going to have a What's something I love? I'm trying to think of like one of the things. Oh, I'm gonna have a couple pieces of pizza when my body tells me it's ready. That's how I make my plan. And I'm gonna stop eating when my body tells me it's had enough. I'm not gonna eat everything that's on my plate. I'm not going to eat everything that's on my plate plus seconds. I'm going to stop eating when my body tells me it's enough. That might mean that I have five bites. It might mean that I have two plates. Either way, I am list, I'm letting my body make that decision in the moment. Not my brain, not my mind that's like going off, like just eat more pizza, just get another bite. It's not that big of a deal. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about my body's feedback and signals about how much food it needs right now. That's what I'm gonna let lead. And so I make that decision ahead of time. I say, I'm gonna get this hungry and I'm gonna get this full. And that's what works. Those two things drive weight loss. Your hunger and your satiety are gonna drive your weight loss. It's not the foods, it's your body's signals. So you have to get connected to those signals and you have to let them lead the charge. So my plan is really based around those two things. Um, when I was losing weight postpartum, I was really pro focused on protein. So I really, that was probably one of the only times in, in the, since I've lost my weight that I've really thought a lot about what are the macros that I want to consume? Because I just realized I was not getting enough protein and it felt really good for me to eat more protein and to focus on eating less sugar. Sugar was the thing that I was like going to, to help me, that my brain wanted to go to, to help me manage stress. 
and it was not going to serve me to lose weight. So I did think about that. Like, what are, if I'm going to eat less sugar, what do I need to be thinking about to create that action where it feels really good and natural? And it's not something that I'm like shoving down my own throat it, metaphorically. <laughs> Probably shouldn't use that metaphor in a, <laughs> when I'm talking about losing weight. Um, so, and then depending on like the foods that were coming up for me. So I talked a lot about this in the episode where I talk about my postpartum weight loss journey, but sometimes I didn't have a lot of control over what I was being served. I was in bed a lot of the time. My husband was making a lot of meals. Sometimes he was like, here's two cinnamon rolls for breakfast. Sometimes he was like, here's um, leftover pizza for lunch and dinner. So I didn't always have a ton of control over the exact foods. And I rarely focus on the exact foods that I'm eating. Protein was a focus, but that's not an exact food. And I certainly wasn't planning and saying like, it has to be this protein exact meal. Um, And then, and I, so depending on the foods that were offered and were there, I was just really focused more on what my body's telling me about how that food feels, about how much I need and about when I'm ready to eat next. Um, Another of the actions that was on my list here is dessert. Like I was watching my sugar during the day, but I'm talking more about like mindlessly snacking and grabbing sugar to help me deal with stress. But I do love to have a dessert now and then. So planning to have, like I'm having chocolate tonight. I'm having a couple squares of chocolate tonight. I'm having a couple, I'm a couple. I'm having a perfect protein bar. Those were so great during my postpartum weight loss. I had, one of those perfect protein bars for dessert, like a couple days out of the week. Sometimes they would be part of my lunch as well. So I really like those. They taste amazing. They don't taste like a protein bar and they really are clean. Um, so that was a really good one for me to like think about like, okay, I'm not having, I'm not going to mindlessly eat cereal out of a box right now. I am going to have a perfect protein bar after dinner tonight for dessert. Um, and then wine was also on my list. Like, how am I going to include having a glass of wine now and then and still lose weight? So that kind of goes into that planning piece as well. Like, okay, if we're having, we're going out to dinner with friends on Friday, I know that I'm going to have a couple glasses of wine then. So I am going to adjust what the rest of my week looks like so that I can have the wine and still lose weight. That's what it that's what it is when you are living your life and losing weight. You're not saying I'm never having wine again and then drinking all of it (laughs) over the weekend. It's like, this is how I'm planning to have this be a part of my life and not derail my weight loss. Um, Another thing that, another action uh, that I took is, and then I, recommend for my clients when they're losing weight is narrowing down the junk foods that you actually like. So I think when it comes to junk food, we kind of want to eat, eat them so quickly. Like it's like, this is off limits. So I need to eat it really fast. I need to not really taste it. If this is the only chance that I'm ever going to get to eat this. So I have to just like eat it all down and not really pay attention to it. Once you start actually paying attention to junk food, which you might think you just love all junk foods universally and they're all off limits. And if only you could just eat junk foods all day long, when you start paying attention, you'll realize they don't actually all taste that good. They don't actually all feel good in your body. Probably most of them don't feel good in your body at all. And you can start narrowing down and saying, these are the ones that I really enjoy so much that I'm willing to put up with how bad they make me feel in my body. And these are the ones that I actually don't really enjoy the taste of that much. And it's really easy for me to just say, I don't really want to eat that anymore. Like, I don't want that to be a part of my life because it makes me feel bad and I don't actually like it as much as I thought I did. So narrowing that list down is actually really helpful because when you start to go to lose weight, you're not saying, 
all junk foods are off limits or limited. You're saying, these are the junk foods that I actually like, and I'm going to plan to have them in this way throughout my week so that I can actually lose weight. So for me, um, and this junk food list is going to be maybe different, but, um, things that I really enjoy that don't serve me to lose weight are probably cheese and crackers. I could just go ham on cheese and crackers any, any day of the week, any time really. I love chocolate and like the, the chocolate with toffee in it is so good. And I actually, I talk about not liking ice cream that much, but I do like milkshakes. So, and then Cheez-Its, white cheddar Cheez-Its. Oh my God, so good. So my list of junk foods that I like to eat is it's pretty small. There's not a lot outside of that. And so if I'm gonna incorporate some of those things in my life while I'm losing weight, like I know what they are, they're very specific and I can plan for them and have them be a part of my life while I lose weight. It's a completely different way of looking at this as opposed to just saying all junk foods are off limits when you don't actually really like all junk foods. Some of them you just, like there's no real point in, in having them in your life at all because you don't enjoy them. So figure that out. What is that list for you? What does that look like for you? Another thing, which I kind of touched on this, but planning to eat your indulgences, planning to have your indulgences. When I was losing my, my 10 pounds, nothing was off limits. I never said I can't have any of this stuff. It was all on the table. I can have any of it at any point, but I'm going to plan to have these indulgences. I'm gonna think about them ahead of time. I'm going to enjoy them when I'm having them because I'm not, there's this line where we say, I can't have it. So then we try to, we don't try to, we overeat it to kind of like without even enjoying it. It's off limits. I shouldn't be eating this, but I am going to eat it just really quickly. I'm just going to shove it all down and not pay attention to it. That's totally different than saying, I can have any of these things. These are the things that I actually like and I want to be a part of my life. Eating them, actually enjoying them, and then not feeling the need to overdo it with them and being totally fine to wait another week until you have it again. So planning for my indulgences instead of just saying, I can't have any of them. And really focusing on when I am eating those indulgences, how am I feeling? When is it enough? Actually tasting them, enjoying them. You cut out all of the obsession over them when you do it that way. The final piece of my, what I eat in a day mindset, my mindset version is sticking to the plan. That's what I call this in my program and a lot on here is sticking to the plan. But what I really mean by that is focusing on your emotional eating, your cravings, your stress eating, whatever you call it, when you are mindlessly sticking food in your mouth and you don't really know why. We call this many different things. Everybody has a, a different name for it. But for me, I can for sure pinpoint this to my, I might start craving certain things at certain times in my life, or like times during the day, I'm sorry. Um, so during my postpartum, when I was experiencing stress, when I was experiencing overwhelm, when I actually had like a minute to sit down and chill, I might be like, oh my God, I'll just get some food because I actually have a minute. So one of my points of focus during this, this weight loss time was focusing on that, was focusing on when I just wanted to eat for no reason, no physical reason. And one of the things that I had to call to the forefront with that was like, what does my brain start telling me when I'm wanting to eat for a reason that isn't physical? So here's a couple of those thoughts that came up for me that I focused on. Um, or I'm sorry, here's a couple of, of examples of what that looks like. Uh, a handful of cereal as I put my husband's cereal box away, 
uh, three bites of dinner that my stomach is like just too full for, but like I'm just mindlessly continuing to eat. Um, tortilla chips getting eaten out of the bag when I'm super stressed, mindlessly munching on crackers so that I can just like check out for a minute. All of those are me just not paying attention, falling into like the stress of the day, the overwhelm of the day. And they were all things that I wanted to like really have my eye on and cut out as much as possible. So how I focus on those productively is by first and foremost, knowing that they're coming and planning for them. If you have been eating a pint of ice cream on the couch every night for the last 10 years, and you wake up today and you tell yourself, not tonight, it's not happening tonight, you are a liar. It is gonna happen tonight. Your brain is gonna do tonight what it's done every other night. And if you're telling yourself it's not gonna happen, you are not going to be prepared for when it does happen. So what I focused on, what my clients focus on, is that knowing that my brain is going to tell me to eat these things when I'm stressed, when I have a minute, when I'm overwhelmed, when I'm putting the cereal box away and planning for how I'm gonna handle it when that comes up. So I think about, I ask myself these questions, when is my brain gonna tell me to eat something today that isn't gonna help me lose weight? How do I want to handle it when my brain does start talking to, to me about eating? And then um, sometimes choosing to mindlessly eat, even when I'm losing weight. This was one thing that came up on a call um, with my clients recently where someone was like, you know, sometimes I'll just have uh, like a snack on the couch in between the end of my work day and my kids coming home from school. Is that a problem? And I was like, is it a problem? <laughs> is it negatively impacting your weight? Are you still listening to your body? Like after you eat that, are you just saying F it and eating all of the things? And she was like, no, I just listen to my body and I adjust, you know, my food later in the day and the next day. Depending. And I was like, yeah, then it's totally fine. And sometimes I was choosing to do that. And that is okay. Sometimes I was like, I need, I'm just going to check out with a snack on the couch for 20 minutes. And then guess what? I might not really eat that much dinner. I might not have that much, you know, to eat the next day. My body will tell me where it needs to adjust so that I'm still losing weight. you you have to trust that your body will do that. You don't need to micromanage it by going on a crash diet the next day or fixing it. And a lot of our weight issues and overeating issues come in when we overeat and then we try to react to that. We usually react by eating more and then the next day we try to say, I'm gonna fix it and I'm gonna go on a crash diet or be really restrictive today. And you don't need to do any of that. You can have a mindless snack as long as you don't let it derail your day. And as long as you just say, I'm just gonna listen to my body and let it tell me when the next time to eat is, when the best next time to eat is. It's really that simple. So sometimes I was choosing to do that. Um, but I was asking myself those two questions. When is this gonna come up today? And how am I going to handle it? And really focusing on that emotional eating at peace was so key, it was so helpful. And it was, again, deepening that relationship with myself and with my body. Um, okay, so I also put this note, the more that I cut back on mindless eating just to check out of an emotion, so to deal with stress, to deal with overwhelm, the more I can enjoy the things that I actually enjoy and actually enjoy them. Okay, I'll say that again. The more I cut back on mindless eating just to check out of an emotion, the more I get to enjoy things I actually enjoy and actually enjoy them. So, and I have a list here. Wine with cheese and crackers, milkshakes, 
peanut butter pretzels, which I forgot earlier when I was talking about junk food. Oh my God, if you guys go to Trader Joe's and get their peanut butter pretzels, you will die and go to heaven. And my parents actually said the almond butter ones are better, which I have not tried, but those peanut butter pretzels are so good. Um, so the more I focused on like, okay, I'm not going to mindlessly eat foods and you know, completely not enjoy them. Just, I'm just utilizing that food in the moment so that I don't have to manage my stress or be, feel stressed out. The more I get to have things that I actually like, like wine with cheese and crackers and actually enjoy them. If I mindlessly eat handfuls of cereal out of a box today, then tomorrow I'm going to be like, probably not hungry and not have the appetite for cheese and crackers and wine. Or even like later today. So does that make sense? Like the more that you cut out these things that aren't serving you and you don't even get to enjoy it, you don't even, aren't, you're not even enjoying it in that moment, the less you get to enjoy things that you actually enjoy. So let that sink in. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with that. That is my mindset version of losing 10 pounds in 30 days. I hope that was helpful. This was a long episode. Um, very long. But there's a lot of nuggets in here. So take this one back through a couple of times. Get out a piece of paper and start thinking about what pieces of this you're going to use, what thoughts you're going to use, what emotions you're going to use. Um, what actions those thoughts and emotions are going to create for you and what are the foods that you actually want to enjoy okay all right I will see you in the next episode bye